Welcome to Cutting Edge Cosplay, where your fellow geek girls hang out and talk all things cosplay. Today, we're going to be talking about what motivates us to actually get the job done. I'm Bears Rar, and I am most motivated by photo shoot. I'm Thunder Bunny, and I'm most motivated by um, being held accountable by my cohorts to get something done for a photo shoot or event <laughs> um, in a timely manner. <laughs> Peer pressure. Yes. (laughs) Basically. (laughs) I'm Dana Mae Darling, and my biggest motivator is conventions. So most recently, we had SakuraCon. How did that go for you, Dana Mae? Okay. So I did start. I did Botan from Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho. And I started this quite a while ago, and I did plan in advance. Um, I just had a very shit pattern that was really hard to understand. And even YouTubers were like baffled. Like everybody just hated this simplicity kimono costume pattern. I should have just went on YouTube and like looked up how to make a, how to sew a kimono. It would have been so much faster than trying to do like a costume one. And so it ended up being kind of like last minute I did I was working on it pretty much every day after work for at least two weeks, and it was so much work. And but um, I was able to finish it for the day that I wanted to for SakuraCon. Um, and my I ended up cutting a lot of corners at the end, and the uh, corners. Sorry. Oh. <gasps> <You're sewing. laughs> yes. Um, I, (laughs) some of the corners that I ended up cutting, um, was basically using Velcro and spray adhesive. So once I got towards the end of the kimono, they, the instructions were to sew, um, some little like eyelets and like snaps and I couldn't get them to line up properly. So basically when I tried to close the kimono, they would miss each other. And it was really frustrating. And then if I had brought it up, it would create a fold or Uh, like a crease or something that looked ridiculous. And so I was like up all night hand sewing these things um, and not getting it right. And I was like, fuck it. I just (laughs) tore them out. And uh, I'd ask my coworker what to do because she has some experience sewing. And she was like, Velcro, you are a genius because Velcro is so cheap and so easy to just sew very quickly. Snap that baby closed. Mm. You're done. And so the last, so basically closing the kimono on its own was an issue. And then I had the bow in the back that I, I, the costume pattern that I had was a traditional kimono and Botons has a bow. (laughs) And I, so I kind of wanted something cute, anime, like fluffy, had a lot of structure to it, um, and just giant and kawaii. Mm -hmm. So my coworker helped me with some ideas, brainstorming some ideas on um, using not interfacing for the fabric to make it a little more rigid, also batting to f- fluff it up a bit. So that's where the spray adhesive came in handy because I was like, I'm out of time. It was the morning of, it was Saturday morning before I was going to go. <laughs> I had to finish this bow. Um, so basically what I did was I spray adhesive the cloth that I was going to use for the bow stuck the batting on there, waited for it to dry, um, threw on the other piece to cover it, and then um, just cinched it in the middle and then used Velcro to Velcro it to my back. And it worked really well. It also had, um, she has a rope kind of tie around her waist. And so we put it through that little um, cinch that I used for the bow to keep it on. And then when I was, came back home, I just unvelcroed it and I just had this giant bow that's really easy to store now. So yeah, Velcro is your friend. You can use it for everything. Very last minute um, corners that are (laughs) definitely going to need to be cut, especially if it's like the last on the line. Another thing, I actually did her wig um, pretty much beforehand, which was really great because I had my other two wigs that I was styling the morning of and they just ate up so much con time, which sucks because you're paying a lot of money to attend a convention. So the next convention... I definitely need to have the wig styled before the day of because you're going to run into some things with the costumes that you're going to need some time for. 
so that's kind of my experience and how and I, and I another motivating factor was that for SakuraCon, I had posted my lineup ahead of time um, just to get the hype going. And a lot of other cosplayers do this for conventions. It's kind of like releasing their schedule for what they're going to be cosplaying. And you get put on that hashtag. So like you can go. So this one was like hashtag SakuraCon lineup. So you click on the hashtag, you see everybody else's cosplays on what they're going to be doing. And I was so hesitant to post that for this one because I was like, they're not done. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them done in time. And I didn't post it for Emerald City Comic Con because I really was not done and not <laughs> confident that I could get my Batwoman cosplay done in time. So that's why I didn't post to that one. But this one's like, nope, I'm going to do it. I have to do it. So that's also something that will keep you, you know, held accountable. I know there's always going to be last minute changes too sometimes if you can't get something done and then you can just make a little post saying I ran at a time I'm not going to be able to cosplay this sex character and then just re-upload the post um, with your changes and you know that people are understanding of that a lot of other cosplayers do that so or just not- don't do that or just don't do that <laughs> that seems like a way okay so I am also on team post your lineup because mm-hmm. exactly like what you said even if I haven't made my cosplays yet it tells people when I'm going to be there what to look for and really kind of gives you the kick in the butt of like people are expecting you to be this character and you're going to let them down if you don't at least that's how I look at it and so for conventions (laughs) I just typically use cosplays that I've that I'm already done with but I'm far enough along in my cosplay making stuff journey that I have a lot on the backlog like I have a lot in storage, you know, so I can kind of just be like, oh, this one's ready. This one's ready. This one's ready. Um, what I but I used to do it specifically as a motivator to get those cosplays done because. Uh, I don't know, especially. In, when you have cosplay friends who you only see at conventions, they need to know who to look for you as and. You will. You might get comments, too, that are like, oh, I can't wait to see this person. Or, oh, I wish you would have done this other character. I don't know if I've ever gotten that. But I'm sure somebody has commented somewhere of, oh, I really was hoping to see this other character. And that kind of guides what people are excited to see, too. And kind of guides maybe which cosplay you prioritize if you're still in the middle of a couple of them. You know? So, I don't know. I like like the accountability aspect of posting my lineup, Mm -hmm. personally. Um. Yeah, I said like conventions are like my biggest motivator because I'm not, I haven't really planned photo shoots before outside of conventions. So realistically, I'm not going to get those pictures. <laughs> Maybe in the future, it's something I want to do. But as of right now and in the past, I don't leave the house to go <laughs> like take pictures of my cosplay. So that's the time for me to get those photos. So that's why I just really take it seriously for conventions. What is your motivation? Photo shoot. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like I said, I don't make new cosplays to go to conventions anymore uh, because there's a lot of people there. If I work really hard on something, I want it to not get ruined. I, I, I don't know. I guess that's like a kind of a weird thing to say because I've never really gotten into a situation at a convention where things were going to get that out of whack, but it just, I get scared. <laughs> So, and with bigger cosplays too, you don't really want to be wandering the con floor. It's rude and hard to maneuver. So you, you'll, there's typically a cosplay area that the cosplayers will hang out at. But when I, if I pay money to go to a convention, I want to go and see the floors and go to panels and things like that. So I don't necessarily want to just hang out in the cosplay area all day. So you cosplay a lot of characters that have giant props and armor and things like that. So that's kind of what she's talking about with it, like getting ruined or being rude. (laughs) Um, Whereas like I've only cosplayed characters really without any (laughs) prop or impending thing that might like block somebody's way so far. Um, So I can, yeah, definitely see why you would want to just keep those ones to photo shoots. That's like kind of a environment that you can control. Yeah. Oh, and I think that what kind of sealed the deal for me on that aspect was one of the first cosplays that I ever did was Snowstorm skin of Sivir from League of Legends. And basically this character carries this big, gigantic 
frisbee practically. In this situation, it was a snowflake. So I made this giant snowflake out of cardboard and paper mache, basically, and it's <laughs> huge. Uh, so I was walking around with it at a convention, one of my first conventions, one of my first big props I've ever made. It was a freaking nightmare. You have it. It wasn't that heavy because it was made out of cardboard, but to get through the convention floor, I had to like hold it up with one arm the entire time and was still hitting people with it as I was going. It got a lot of great reception and mm -hmm. League of Legends had a booth at that convention. So I was that was like kind of cool, but mm, that it wasn't a very con friendly piece. But it was great for photos. So I actually planned a bunch of photo shoots with that character and we went out into the fields and like got some really cool jungling pictures. So it was just, I don't know. It's it for me, it feels like a more satisfying outcome because if I for what a more satisfying outcome is to plan for photo shoots versus conventions because a it's kind of more on your own schedule. So with a convention, you have to get it done by this time. You don't have a choice in that. The, they're not going to change the convention for your, <laughs> for your cosplay. I'm still going to schedule a shoot before I have, personally, I'm going to schedule a shoot before I have the cosplay done for that same accountability reasons. Um, if you saw our episode about photography, you'll see that it's really a big faux pas to move your photo shoot around too much. So that kind of keeps me honest. And I, I, I am very motivated by not letting people down. So if I have it scheduled already, I have made a commitment and I'm going to be there, which means I'm going to get this cosplay done because <laughs> I don't want to waste everybody's time, get to the day of because I thought that I could rush it at the end and then have to cancel. So, And because it's an individual person, aka the photographer and any of their helpers or handlers that they might be, have with them, it's like more of a personal. Like, if I don't get it done by a convention, oh, I kind of let myself down. Maybe some followers, if they cared all that much, mm -hmm. if I do this cosplay or another. But if I, if I like cancel on a like a person, then I feel really bad. So, I was basically staff for the Ren Fair, so I had a personal acquaintance ask me to be on the Ren Fair staff when I did my orc, and that was another big cosplay. Um, so it was kind of like it had to be done by a convention, but it was also a favor for a friend kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that was like a mixture. Yeah. That was like a mixture of the two. Oh, Getting you choked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the people I might have let down. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, so I've never done a like I've never scheduled with a photographer on my own like we did the KDA shoot with all of us um, but luckily that like that cosplay was provided by my friends so I didn't really have much to do like to get it all ready um, so maybe that's kind of why like conventions are, for me are such a big motivator to get things done is because I just I haven't done the other things yet <laughs> let's do uh, some photo shoots oh gosh I think for me um, it's more just events in general but then it's not necessarily a lot of pressure because unlike bears i'm more going to create a costume to be like to have fun in so i'm probably gonna slap it together like a couple days before or the, the morning of it might not last the night so hopefully <laughs> i'll get some pictures of it but it's not the end of the world if i don't um it's just supposed to kind of more enhance the experience of like the costume party or convention or whatever else for me. So I'm not super invested, I guess, in like how much time and energy went into it because it was really only like a day of time and energy. Mm. Um, I'm more interested in the costuming part and she's more interested in the play of cosplay. Yeah, that's she, good. Because you honestly do have so much fun in your mm -hmm. cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you're right, like the not putting too much pressure on yourself is like huge part of that right. and you are not like the way she's saying it makes it sounds like it's like slapped together 
I mean, right, right, right. Kind of, kind of is. But <laughs> so that kind of, that kind of discounts the, yeah. the creativity that goes into making that slap together look really intentional and like you worked really hard on it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you do okay. it. <laughs> My slap together looks slap together. <laughs> My makeup in the morning takes me too long than it should. And I do that every single day. <laughs> so I can't imagine doing something extraordinary like so fast that you just don't have like know the repetition of and then it looks so great i mean that's where you start getting creative with things so too like your velcro like my tails before our kda shoot only one of them is sewn all of the rest of them are held together with uh safety pins Mm. um quickly like flipped inside out kind of tucked into each other and like the lights only went through like half of the tails so i just (laughs) tried to make sure they went through the top layer of the tails Um, and so you just kind of alter based off of like how much time you have left, what resources you have, how many spoons you have left, you know? (laughs) So, um, so I don't know, because like I said, if I'm going to be running around trying to enjoy myself at like a convention or a costume party or something like that, like I can't be super worried about like what my out, what's happening with my outfit as Mm. long as it's. Still covering me. So. <laughs> yeah, actually, at SakuraCon, the first night I had decided um, to wear Power's bunny version, but I was like, it was from Amazon. It didn't fit very well. I tried to sew it a little bit to kind of make it fit a little bit better. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> but I was like determined to wear it anyways. That's and, Power from Chainsaw Man? Mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. Chainsaw okay. Man, yeah. Um, God, I want the figure so bad, but it's like 200 to 300 bucks. And it's like, okay, one day, one day. Um, anyways, um, and I was like, how am I going to get this thing to stay on me? Like, and I wasn't really confident in the little clear straps that it came with to like stay on my shoulders because I wanted to wear it specifically for the rave. And I was going to be hopping around, dancing around. And I was like, this isn't, this is not going to stay on me (laughs) at all. And so I ended up, um, the, and it's a very low cut in the back. And so I couldn't wear a bra with it because you would see the strap. And I needed extra stuff because it's a bunny suit. You know, you want to be like extra. Mm -hmm. So I ended up getting this like sticky bra thing on Amazon and it it worked okay. I wouldn't get it again because you could still see the sides of the, it was like clear, but you could still see them on the sides, my sides. And he's, yeah. And and again, last minute safety pens and I did not have any at my house. So luckily right next to the convention center is this convenience store that also sells wine and <laughs> just saying they had safety pins there Woo-hoo. and I was like oh hell yeah so I safety pinned the sucker to the bra so it would stay on and I ended up using the safety pins for the kimono also when I didn't do the velcro and like one part that I needed to so yeah that safety pin saved my life because my strap did come off it did when oh, we were dancing no. it was like <laughs> I was like oh my god <laughs> And luckily, I had the safety pins <laughs> keeping it on me. So yeah, safety pins. Oh my god, I would say safety pins. You ha- is a must have. Like like bobby pins, safety pins. You have mm-hmm. to have safety pins because I probably didn't even need the velcro if I had the safety pins. Safety pins yeah. and super glue are um absolutely required in your <laughs> con kit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, when I w- was at that same convention, I was telling you about Severe. She has this hat, this furry hat, like a hunter cap. It has a gem on the front. And we were walking around the convention and it just like, oh, oh no, right into my hands. <laughs> I was like, oh no, what do I do? But luckily, my partner had super glue. He, he had a whole kit I prepared him with. Oh, God. There were lots of stuff in that kit that were way over the top, not needed, but the su- super glue came in perfectly handy. Very lucky. We just right back on. That makes me think of, um, I think it was one of the first times we went out in our KDA outfits and the little like hearts that were like on your belt or somewhere Mm -hmm. kept popping off. Well, the problem with that belt for KDA, uh, I do a Kali and a Kali has a white belt with a gold heart on the front. And I had actually gotten that cosplay off Etsy and the, the heart on the front to make it kind of like a nice smooth belt it actually belted in the back and was covered by like a pouch that she wears on the back so it was just like smooth across and then the buckle the heart buckle was just clipped right because didn't it have like two prongs on the top and then one on the back and then no it had one clip it was an alligator clip oh so it was like 
technically grippy because the alligator clips have those teeth, but uh, it would probably stick well in like your hair or something, but it kept sliding off the belt. It was a good idea, not not good in reality. Mm, yeah. Was this when you guys went to spin? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you guys, I don't know if you know this. I know you guys know that there's still pictures of that photo shoot, but there's actually like a little video now. Like, I don't know if it's on their Instagram or, oh or what, but like you guys are still like on there. Oh. So one of their main like okay. debut <laughs> cosplayers that they like to show off. Pretty cool. Pretty we cool. We still have to pay for the after party though. Yeah, and the drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not make it to um, Q after party for mm. Sakurakan. They were also doing. Um, like a rave type thing for Sakura Khan that was like anime themed or something, which would have been really cool to go to. Um, because you know, we've been to um the Sonic Boombox one bin a lot. So it would have been fun to check out another after party, but wasn't the cards. We're also motivated by after parties, yeah. in case you can't <laughs> tell. Too. There's no, and like that's kind of common too with some cosplayers, like they don't really want to go to the convention, but they still want to cosplay and they still want to hang out with cosplayers, but so after parties are great because they're relatively inexpensive or free and you can still see all your friends and stuff there. And it's fun. The and you can wear drink. pretty much any cosplay to an after party. But the fun thing about after party cosplay planning is that you can kind of get away with more like casual variants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like this is a casual version of Alice in Wonderland or whatever. Like this is... That that crazy superhero. This is this is Superman on his day off kind of situation. And people Clark can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. And then even that, like, people will still want your pictures or dance around or whatever. Like, pretty fun. Or maybe cosplays that you might not be comfortable like going to a full convention in. Like, um, I've been to a couple after parties where they had the guys from mad max where they're like all covered in oh, cool. white and stuff and like it's kind of skimpy for a guy and so i could see why you wouldn't want to wear that to a convention maybe where everybody's like sober and looking at you but <laughs> sober and looking at you <laughs> but an after party is fine because you're kind of like, like all crammed together and like people are looking at you and like appreciative but not like it's dark. Yeah, There's like little like laser different. lights and stuff for mm -hmm. the dance. It's it's different. Everyone's there to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Let loose. So what do you have any stories that are like little corners that you cut like last minute, even though I know you do kind of do your things kind of a little more closer to the date, but things that you're like, this is I don't have time for this. So then I did this instead. I'm thinking of the the Freddy Krueger makeup. Oh, that wasn't really cutting corners, though. My plan just wasn't working, so I had to okay. alter. So what did you do um, instead? Because also we yeah. were in the in, we So like part of the photo shoot, we were um, kind of near our fireplace, our fire pit in the backyard. And that was kind of like affecting your makeup, too. So like mm -hmm. what how did you do anything differently for that? I just have had to keep redoing it. Um, is basically what oh, it was. Oh, god. So because I was originally going to do liquid latex. Um, but... I kind of wanted more of like a shiny, like burnt look. So um, I kind of changed my plan last minute, switched it over to um, like a homemade modeling wax um, with like flour and um, Vaseline um, and then put in color from there. Um, but the problem is like with the heat, it was like melting the um, like the Vaseline essentially. So oh, it was okay. like sliding, especially on my neck because that's what. We were moving, or I was moving the most. Um, so then it would just kind of start melting and like gooping. So I would try to like kind of respread it back out, put more powder on it to kind of like hold it in place. But it was also changing the color. So like, oh okay, the pictures towards the end of the night, um, the like kind of holes in the skin, um, were like a really dark brownish reddish whereas like earlier in the night it was kind of more like a lighter like scar color to it oh okay um also that day we were shooting for hours like it was yeah, like it was half the day <laughs> shoot we got some awesome pictures but yeah it would be hard especially with something like vaseline where it's like it's not a solid to begin mm, with so yeah. 
with your body heat and with the heat of the fire outside, I'm sure mm-hmm. that was kind of difficult to work with. Whereas like if I had stuck with um, liquid latex, it would have been fine. It's just that with how much of my face I was going to put it on and then try to like rub holes into it with, it would have been terrible to take off, especially for the area that I wanted to with like the softer skin around the eyes. Um, my neck always gets kind of irritated when I put liquid latex on it. Oh. Um, so, I mean, it's normally fine for the event, but like the after effects of it, I'm like, "Mm, I'll rethink my decisions on that, (laughs) which is why I figured I'd try the other option. Okay. Yeah. So you would recommend that for like something quick though, not like an all day thing. Yeah. Cause like I have really sensitive skin. So I think anything like liquid latex would, I would probably be out for days, like with a rash or something, if well, I tried to use I mean, it. It's fine while it's on. It's more trying to get it off because oh, it's the okay. softer skin. So, and like for the most part with liquid latex, you can like peel it off. It's like when you're in school and like you cover <laughs> your hand and like Elmer's glue and then you peel the layer off. It's essentially the same thing, only a bit more sturdy. Oh, okay. So, so, and if you have like softer skin areas, like around your eyes or like on your neck or something like that, like it's fine while you're wearing it and moving around and stuff. But then when you try to take it off afterwards, it can cause irritation or like sometimes like certain parts of my neck will kind of break out. Okay. Um, but it's like afterwards. Yeah. It's worth it for the photos. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's kind of another thing with me too is, um, as far as accountability for like motivator, um, when we have group stuff kind of like that, I want to at least match like the level that everyone else in the group is doing. So like, for example, like the first time that we did um, KDA, everyone had like these bot costumes that just looked perfect for it. And then I like slapped together something based off of stuff that I either already had or got from like Goodwill or something. I'm like, well, I look like the ragtag version what of the, the group. Heck? It looks so good. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I kind of try to match, and so that will also affect my deadlines and stuff mm. too for trying to get stuff done on time. But- that costume looked great. You did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up having to do a lot of altering for that costume because it didn't fit. <laughs> For your Kaisa? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also her her leggings are, like, stretchy, but they're, like, not very, uh, they would, um, they're not very um, flattering, sturdy, I guess. Oh, like, so I had to uh, do sewing, but I had to hand sew and be very careful because it would rip or it would, like, so, and it still, it still didn't look quite, fit. I mean, it worked for the photos, but it's not something I could, I did wear that again um, at PAX. And that's when I really noticed, I was like, this needs, this might be the last time I can wear this. Like, whereas, I mean, if you, yours, since you made it and it's with like, I don't know, your shorts that you have that you wear. Yeah, those are just athletic shorts. Athletic shorts. Like you could still wear that for other stuff where mine, I think, I don't think I can wear it again. Like the gold is kind of melted off. (laughs) I I don't know. That's where you get metallic um, paint markers. Okay. That's to okay. Just like redraw I back think, on. Yeah, I think I will. I could wear that again. It's just I will have to put work into it again. Like it's not, even though it's bought a bot costume, um, which I, I think same with my power bunny suit. There's, it's like a one day thing for some of them, um, especially if it's on like kind of the cheaper end. Um, my bunny costume was super cheap on Amazon. Like I want to say like twelve to twenty dollars. Like oh. super cheap. And the ears by the end of the rave were like on my face. Like they would not stay up <laughs> there. They would no matter how many times we adjusted them. Like we were basically it was just a laughing matter at the end of the night because they were just so fucked. And, <laughs> and I'm just like, OK, well, this is like which is great if you because co- like, I don't know, cosplay is such a wasteful hobby <laughs> that it is kind of nice to have. Those cheaper things that, you know, you're just going to get the photos for like one time use because if you spend so much money on the materials to make it last longer, you also have more in your closet that you have to store and then you have to force yourself to shoot those. So I know I think it's kind of nice to have a range, but yeah, so Kaisa is on its last legs, the bunny power. Oh my God. I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to be able to wear that again, but it's pretty funny. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so glad we have a photo shoot scheduled so 
Cutting Edge Cosplay, the four of us, Rebecca Rose isn't here today, but we have scheduled out four shoots this year. And one of them we've already done. It's the Disney princesses. Two of them we've already done. Oh, we did the um, fan art in the beginning of the oh, year. Oh, I counted that as last year. Oh, okay. The 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 uh, the apocalypse. That yeah, was it was like a New oh. Year release, but we did do. Okay. I mean, well, we anyways, we have year. we have four other ones other than the apocalypse, <laughs> basically quarterly photo shoots. And the first one we've already done. That's the peasant princesses. And the next one we have our photo shoot in two weeks. And it's two weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, and we're doing DC bombshells. I'm so used to saying DC bombshells Wonder Woman. I was like, wait, we're not all doing Wonder Woman. No, I'm doing Wonder Woman. Um, I've been doing it all on my Twitch stream, which has been a very humbling experience because uh, this particular costume is a lot of sewing. And uh, it's a skill that I'm still developing and I have been patterning and patterning and patterning and I came up with a perfect pattern for my shorts and so two days ago on my stream I was making them using the patterns that I made myself and the material must have been different than the pattern materials that I was using because it doesn't fit the same but we have two weeks left. So this is like the where the the photo shoot being the motivator is kind of coming into play mm-hmm. of do I have time to get everything done if I go back and repattern on my sh- my shorts again? No. So what I'm gonna have to do is make this work and make it look good. And because I still have multiple pieces to still make in two weeks. And I I'm so nervous. Oh god. But if I don't get it done, then I'm letting them down. <laughs> so uh, so it's the exciting. Pressure is on. <laughs> it's exciting. It's nerve-wracking and it's like really stressful, but the stress is really motivating to me. So I was also this you're streaming for the first time ever all of your progress for Wonder Woman. So I'm sure that's also taking a lot of extra time and a lot of extra like prep work and you know. You're not just doing Wonder Woman. You're also streaming and editing those videos and et cetera. So Mm -hmm. there's also a lot more other work that you're doing for this one cosplay that none of us are doing. So that's also a lot of work. So I wish you luck. If you need help, let us know. We'll help you. (laughs) Come hang out with me on my stream. It's it's nice to have people to talk to. Um, Nice to have things to talk about that are not what I'm doing, because if I'm doing it by myself, if I'm doing the project by myself, I start hyper fixating on like this line isn't perfectly straight. Oh, no. And like, you're never going to see that. But (laughs) But if I have off to the side, we're actually talking about Legos and music, (laughs) then I can kind of let this go because I'm more relaxed. You know what I mean? Mm. We talk about Legos a lot on our stream. So if you like Legos coming, (laughs) that's awesome. (laughs) Um, actually, at SakuraCon, there was, I don't remember their name, but um, there was a booth of people who um, sell Lego figures that they design that are like comic characters and like mm. all sorts of other like pop culture characters. And it was like just the little dude. So it was like an so army cute. of like little like nerd Lego men. It was really cool. Um, but I was con motivated for this particular cosplay for this group. Um, so I was Batwoman. and. I do not have a comic cosplay. I'm I'm more of an anime person. I don't think you guys realize how what the extent of that is. The anime uh, darling <laughs> likes anime. <laughs> um, and so I, I was like, oh my god, I if I'm gonna cosplay at this event, I have to cosplay at least one comic character. And lucky for us, we're doing comic characters for this group shoot. So I was determined to get it done, not for the group shoot, sorry guys, for the convention so that I could fit in a little bit more. And I mean, I ended up cosplaying um, Lucy from Edge Runners, which is an anime, but whatever. It was, you know, pop culture, it worked. But the Batwoman was, yeah. And it was really great too, because I met, um, I met up with like three different photographers there. So that was so awesome to be able to like get that done for the group, but also in time for the convention. It's my first time cosplaying a comic character ever. 
Um, and then also to have so much like exposure and like, it really boosted my confidence a lot to like meet these photographers and like have them take my photo. And then like they posted on, on their Instagrams, which was before I even posted it on mine. So I was like, I felt really good <laughs> after all that. So it was a really great experience. Um, and then now I get to kick back and relax, at least for this one, because it's already done. Um, She's and then- just drinking mimosas and laughing. <laughs> watching my stream (laughs) a little to the left (laughs) and then for another one in the future it's game related so that'll be fun to do because we're going to PAX I am dying to finish this project so that I can start working on the other one I'm so excited for the next one guys Guys. I'm so excited (laughs) I have it all planned out I know how I'm gonna do it Mm -hmm. I'll tell you about it after we get these pictures out we'll start talking more about the next one but just know sometimes Sometimes you just want to get one project done so you can get to the next one. This one's going to be fun to shoot. The Wonder Woman's going to be fun to shoot, but the next one's going to be fun to make. Yeah, so, it's going to be more playful too. Yeah. What's your plan on, um, are you going to do, is it Stargirl? Uh, yeah. Your plan on doing that? Probably a swimsuit. Um, they have patches, the star patches at Joanne's that you can iron on. Okay. I saw. Yeah. That's something you're interested in. I'm not sure. In. I haven't thought about it. I thought we were shooting it in May. So. No. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Uh, but the two, first weekend of May. Two weeks is the last, or the end of mm-hmm. April. Okay. Three weeks then. Great. Yeah. <laughs> it's this week. It's right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So over here. Okay. Yeah. So we've got three weeks. Um, but yeah, yes. I don't know. Never mind. Yeah. All panic is gone. We're fine. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't have time in the next two weeks to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'll I probably... think a swimsuit would be good. Um, because yeah. it's kind of like either that or like athletic shorts with like some type of swimsuit type top because it's like kind of an odd halter looking thing. Yeah, it's like a hum- and... romper with a halter top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. So maybe some athletic shorts or something. We'll see. I could probably find shoes that'll be similar at like Goodwill or Value Village. So I'll just start looking around for that. That's what I did for Wonder Woman. I found some shoes at Goodwill and just painted them red. Yeah. So we'll see. (laughs) Figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) You always do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, For my cleats, um, I was looking on Amazon for them and they were just too expensive and they weren't the right color. And I didn't want like actual cleats because it was just for this cosplay. And I knew I would never wear them or like, you know, play baseball like this character does. Um, and so I ended up going to Dick's Sporting Goods and they had cleats for kids that were like plasticky ones for like 20 bucks. Like they were so cheap and they were all black, which is exactly what I was looking for with a little bit of the stitching was white. So we ended up just using a red Sharpie or I used a red Sharpie and colored the white red. And then my husband painted the was helping me. Thank you very much. Um, was helping me with the other logo that was on there that I think was white. And then just we just used leather paint to paint over it black. And you couldn't see it at okay. all. It was perfect. Toodaloo. Yep, 20 bucks for shoes. Oh, And they're great. So one day, maybe, I mean, maybe I could wear them because they are like legit kids' cleats. So. so cute with your little baby feet. I know. <laughs> so for kids, okay, so kids' sizing for women is just, you just... They can just like go down two sizes or like it's ridiculous. So I'm a size seven and a half for women's shoes. So I wore a size, I think five or something in kids shoes and like they fit perfectly. Like just there's the conversions are so easy. Like you think, oh, I have adult feet, but I can't wear kids shoes. No, you definitely can. Definitely can. (laughs) It's going to be watching this and they have like monster feet and they'll be like, I can fit in kids shoes. They might be able to. We have some nieces that have some big feet. And you know what? They wear kid sizes. <laughs> I don't know. I thought women or kids sizes only went to like size four or something for girls. And then you had to go to adult sizes because there wasn't anything that was like mm-hmm. big enough. No, there's youth sizes. Well, for soccer oh. cleats, you get kid sizes. Yep. Right. Or That's baseball crazy. cleats. And the same with like men's shoes too. Like we were in New York and I wanted to get some new Adidas that were like all cool, like fashionista people would wear. And I was like, but they're men's sizes. And like, same thing, like women, for some reason, women's sizing just doesn't make any sense. You actually have to go down, I believe, for men's so sizing. Like pants. Women's yeah. sizes don't make sense for pants. Yeah. Don't get me started on pants. Yeah. So I know. like, 
Honestly, like your just, shorts that you work so hard on that still didn't work. Right. <laughs> but half the reason I modify, I took so long modifying those shorts is because the damn simplicity pattern didn't have pockets in it. That is freaking illegal. That's crazy. Yeah. Coming after you, simplicity. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you have to make things so hard for us? <laughs> Jerks. Sim- simpletons over here. Why don't you just wear a fanny pack like a normal person? <laughs> <laughs> Well, because nowadays okay, you wear the baby pack up here instead of around the waist. The crossbody. Yeah. <laughs> or a fanny pack. <laughs> I just didn't even know what to say to that person. <laughs> what? <laughs> like the see-through ones that you wear to raves and stuff. <laughs> Those are probably work in uh, sporting <laughs> events, too. <laughs> I might have to, I really might have to end up just going to Goodwill and finding blue shorts, honestly. I I don't want to. I don't, I want to make these ones work, but I don't have enough material to make them again. And material is expensive, so I don't have it in my budget right now to go and buy more material for this. So I'm hoping, I have a, I have one idea of a quick fix on how to fix the, the problem that I'm having is like, I won't tell you in case you won't notice if I don't say anything. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm having a real issue with it. And I think that there's a very simple solution to it. If that doesn't work, I'm going to have to go buy. New pants. I saw on YouTube somebody cut out a pair of denim shorts to how they wanted them to fit. Um, and then they used that pattern for fabric. And because denim is a little more like form fitting and. It, this is in this is specifically for my Lucy shorts. I got two Lucy cosplays. I bought two and the shorts didn't work out for me for either of them. And so I ended up just wearing like Spanx le- like leather leggings without the shorts. I was like fuck these. They're not going to look good on me. I'm not going to feel confident like confident or comfortable in them. I'm just going to forego the shorts mm-hmm. even though it's like iconic that she wears them. And it's great. I feel like so great whenever I see cosplayers and they're wearing them. I'm like, God, you're so, you look so good and you're so confident to wear those because they are like kind of showy um, and not comfortable and not realistic <laughs> at all. Um, so I was thinking about sewing my own, which never happened and they never will probably. <laughs> um, but that was what I saw is that somebody, they used like white, I guess it doesn't have to be white, but they used white denim shorts that fit them really well. And then they just made a pattern using the denim shorts. So that's a good idea. Good idea. Or just buy blue. Well, I'm just hoping (laughs) because I have it all like 90% sewn together already. And I did spend like a good solid like 20 hours patterning and repatterning and repatterning these just the shorts. I haven't even started on the shirt yet Um, to make them fit exactly how I wanted them to. I just, something about the final sewing just didn't work out. And you know what? Sometimes that's how it goes. You got to find workarounds, especially Mm -hmm. when you're planning for a photo shoot that other people are going to be at. (laughs) You just got to get it done. Everything that I've sewn so far using a pattern, I've had to take in afterwards. Uh, My Batwoman, I basically just bunched it together with clips and then sewed it and cut the excess off because it just, even though... are you using a pattern it's still well i mean i don't know if you pattern the shorts specifically to you right well i started with the pattern that simplicity gave me uh, and it didn't fit at all (laughs) so i just made modifications to that pattern and brought it in brought it in brought it in because it fit great on my hips and it was way too big on my waist and so i just had to Mm -hmm. finesse it make it fit i mean better too big than too small oh for sure yeah so yeah, if it comes down to the wire, just use what you have that's you're comfortable in and sewing sucks. So <laughs> sometimes it's not always going to work out. I know for, I feel like I've learned a lot from starting sewing at our Disney because I did the skirt and the skirt. Now that I look at it, I'm like, damn, I did a horrible job on that. Your Aurora um, looks so good though. <laughs> but the sh- I recycled the shirt part of it because that looked okay. I was happy with that. Um so I didn't. Ha- Luckily, I didn't have to redo a whole shirt. Just use the Amazon one. Um, the Lucy stuff, you know, I didn't have to do any sewing for that. But then I, you know, just skipped on those shorts. They're not going to work out. 
um, the other sewing project. I um, For the kimono, same thing. Like I had to kind of do some alterations to get it to fit me. Plus it's easy with the kimono because you have the thing around your waist that kind of holds everything together. My CC cosplay had a hole in the butt <laughs> like it did underneath the zipper. And I saw another cosplayer um, actually... Can't remember her name right now but she did post a picture she was like my fat ass like <laughs> opened up us and then she's like opened up a hole in this but i was like mine came that way too so i'm wondering if we bought the same cosplay and have oh. this you know we're curvier girls so maybe just accentuated the space there underneath the zipper where it stopped um so i had to run that thing through a sewing machine and i was terrified i was going to ruin it because it's like this like plasticky weird material Luckily, it worked out, but it was a miracle that it didn't bust the end because it was also very, very tight around that area, and I was wearing it all day long, and I we had an, a change of clothes, I believe, in the car just in case it busted, but wow. I mean, yeah. you didn't need to sit anywhere, right? Well, we, I think we did. <laughs> like, we did to go out to eat and stuff, but yeah, it was walking around. I was like, hmm, is it still holding together back there? <laughs> That's why test fits are great. I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't always do a test fit before a convention. Like, just <laughs> hope this works and out mm -hmm. we go. But I mean, that's kind of how I was with our Disney princesses. Like, first time I had tried it on was like that morning. Like, oh, yeah. hope this works out for the photo shoot. <laughs> Yes, we'll see. Yeah, luckily you did. Yeah. A Amazon's been killing it with the cosplays, though. They're really you can really have good luck with them. Except it doesn't seem like there's any cosplays for any of our DC characters. So, because well, I've looked. no, because they partnered with Simplicity to do the pattern. So then they're like boycotting things that are already made and they want you to make sew your own, which is an, a journey. I don't know. <laughs> I had to search high and low for a Wonder Woman pattern and I got one on, I think, Etsy was reselling them. I got on eBay. And it was the wrong size. I got the, the small ones and I'm not. A small person so i had to then find another one that was like i just the second sizes up yeah i did the biggest one like when i when i measured my body i need a size like 16 pattern and all the ones that i bought i was like oh i'm a size like eight or ten like dresses so this should be fine no they're like <laughs> it's a different world than like the clothes that you buy at the store so what i've been doing with um these patterns is just making them like too big and then just taking them in at the end because I'm like terrified to make them too small. And then all of that money spent on fabric is now wasted because fabric right now is so expensive. It's like, is this even worth <laughs> making myself? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious with hearing our trials and errors of sewing these DC girls. Are you, is that why you're just like? No, I time. truly don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> like, I am I have way too many other things going on in my life right now, and that's, like, bottom priority. Yeah. So I'm just going to figure it out. I'm not sewing something together from scratch. I'm just going to find something close, and I'll make it work. Yeah. So. I will yeah. say this. If you're planning on doing the Bombshells Wonder Woman, find, like, free patterns online and use those, because these ones don't seem to be working very well. <laughs> It's just also, I think the Batwoman one turned out okay. It's just kind of a user error because that was my first cosplay I ever sewn the whole thing of. So you have to take that into account as well. Fair. That it's like I'm That's very true. new. I don't know what this all the sewing lingo is. And like, yeah, it was, I had to basically rip out all my stitching every single time I stitched something because I did it wrong every single oh. time. So that took a while. But But realistically, with me being as beginner as I am, and having to redo every single thing I did at least once, it still only took me two weeks. I was working on it after work every day and on the weekends, but I still got it done, you know, within the deadline that I had for the convention. So it was definitely doable. Well, so I, unlike for this last convention, you you made like four costumes, right? When did you start making them? Um, I I think two weeks probably is more realistic. I started buying the fabric, getting the materials together, like maybe a few months ago, but actually sitting down and sewing them probably two to three weeks. The power cosplay, actually, I had a lot more work. It took about a day or two um, sewing because I did want um, the button up shirt to be more flattering. But I ended up like actually re-sewing the seams on the arms and, and bringing it all in. 
on the sides and that took at least a day which sucked because the whole reason why I cosplayed power was because it was like an easier cosplay. It's just a button up white shirt and slacks like work pants, which I definitely have a ton of those, but it's just my personal preference is like, I wanted it to fit a lot better, like more flattering. And so that ate up a lot of time for a cosplay that I thought wouldn't take any time at all. Mm -hmm. So, but that realistically took like two days. I have the teeth because she has sharp teeth. I have the like little Fake Thanks. teeth that you can like do, I, and um, and I wish I could do that, but I I didn't because the Con required masks this year, so I didn't bother with the teeth. But I only got photos when I was at the convention, and I took I took a lot of photos with my mask off, and I now I wish that I did the teeth because it it looks dumb yeah. with my normal like human <laughs> horse teeth, you know, <laughs> fake demon girl. I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I would have added so much more if I actually put in that effort. Um, and then it was my first time wearing these like contacts that I couldn't see out of too. And I'm already new at putting in contacts. I'm still a new cosplayer. So, I mean, I'm crying off my makeup. And then as soon as I put on the contacts, I can't see to fix my makeup. So that was difficult. Yeah. <laughs> but um, now I've become really adjusted to using or used to using the little things you put the contacts on. And then you just like like little suction cup things. You just like, bloop, right into your eyes. So I'm hoping next time I cosplay her, it'll be easier, but I really couldn't see at all. <laughs> I couldn't read a menu. Dude. I couldn't see. Um, we walked around the floor to like go shopping and I couldn't see anything. I was like, oh. but for some reason they were very comfortable. So I was able to wear the contacts all day long. No problem. Um, even at the rave, I still had them on. I was like, wow. this is cool. I look so crazy right now. Um, but the teeth really pulled it together. So yeah, that was a lack of thing i wish i put the effort into doing but i've never done it before either so i don't know how long have you ever have you guys ever done like the little fake fangs or teeth or anything like that mm -hmm. i have some fangs that i used for a demon and that's they're they're pretty cool because like you kind of like put this like resin goo inside of the tooth it's like hollow and then you like stick it on your tooth and it forms exactly to your tooth so then you can just kind of kind of it literally like clicks on and clicks off Oh, cool. It's really weird. And can it stays you, on all night. Yeah. Can you eat and drink with them on or does it make it weak to take off? I was eating and drinking with them on. It was fine. Do you swallow any of the teeth? No. Oh I wouldn't have a trachea anymore if I swallowed those <laughs> teeth. Uh, cool. So you would so you would say you took maybe a month in total getting ready for your convention since you were making all four costumes basically? The CC one I bought online, but I did have to style the wig, and I wish I had more given myself more time for the wig. Um, so yeah, I would say a month, um, four costumes, two of them. One I had to sew completely by hand, the entire thing. One of them I just had to alter, like the CC one, I just had to alter the butt, <laughs> sew the butt. Um, and same with the power one. So yeah, but when I get fixated on something, that's all I do. Mm -hmm. So I get home from work. I'm working on it all my weekends from morning to night. I'm working on it. Um, so, yeah. And I don't really give myself a lot of time, but I'm like, OK, Batwoman took my entire life for two weeks. Sakura Khan took like my entire life for like two, three weeks. Okay. Um. But I was, but with my experience of limited mo like visibility, but I'm thinking about my next convention, I'm probably not going to call like cosplay on one of the days because I want a day where I can just run through, go shopping, see everything and not have to worry about it. Um, and then not have that extra wig to get right <laughs> and makeup to get right, you know, morning of where I can just enjoy the con because it is a lot of money to go to those and not be able to enjoy it, <laughs> see <Yeah>. it. <laughs> yeah. So with our next cosplay after this one, it's game related. Um, and PAX is not until September. I think we'll have plenty of time for that one. Um, is there any other makeup looks or cosplays that you guys are planning aside from that one that are like personal stuff? I haven't thought that far out. Yeah. <laughs> I usually plan for the convention about a month before the convention. Um, and that way, if I, because, you know, like I said, I, I wear costumes that I already have mm. to conventions, but if I think about it a month out, I can get my lineup situated and I usually like make my little graphic for the lineup at the beginning of the month before. And then 
post it closer to the day of nobody wants to see it a month early. <laughs> and then uh, I can look at that and be like, okay, what do I still need to work on? Because everything I have right now needs a little bit of TLC. Mm. Uh, I usually will leave the convention, maybe wash a few things, put it in a box, and mentally note, oh, yeah, I need to fix this strap. Or, oh, yeah, I need to do, do a little bit of sewing right here. But I don't do it until I have it in my lineup and have to do it. Do you have any photo shoots that are coming up before the convention that you're planning? Or I have to reschedule a photo shoot. Um, we had a family emergency, and so I had to cancel a couple of things. Mm. So I have to reschedule a photo shoot for Batgirl. Um, I actually have a couple of Batgirl shoots coming oh, up. Okay, so. yeah. Did you make that costume, or did you buy it? That would it have been a lot of sewing. Really cool. <laughs> no, that one I bought. You know what, though? It's actually a terrible costume. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, it looks great. And I'm really happy with how the photos turned out. I would never be able to wear it to convention. Because I don't know how this is even physically possible, how they made this costume work. So it's, I think it's... um. Oh, my God. I guess it must just be really... Have a lot of, like, solid pieces in the front. But when you zip up the back... There's no stretch in the back, so you can't sit because it pulls. So something about like the tension in the back of the costume pulls it like. Oh, my God. So you can't bend because this doesn't move. It just strangles. So I did this whole photo shoot um, at the at a steam plant. We were there for probably two hours. Great. And I take this costume off and like there's just slash across my neck where the seam of the costume. Oh Horrible. So that is a photo shoot only costume. Wow. Unfortunately. But I, I've been playing a lot of Gotham Knights and she has uh Batgirl has a really cute casual outfit. So I might try to like make her shirt. I was trying to just find the shirt that she wears in the game mm. and just buy one. But it also it's like a block key. Where like the top is purple and the bottom is like a golden rod, okay. and so might I might just sew myself a shirt. Yeah, do that, and then I can wear my 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 mask and my casual outfit. I have a really cute outfit for my dog too that I really want to. <laughs> I get a little Batgirl and my dog. So that's cute. Funny, you just posted something really cool. It was for kind of like the Easter holiday that like special effects oh, thing how did you do that that was transition. so cool it's a mask that is it like a whole mask yeah or? it's just a mask i know and then how did for like the editing like how um did you do that? so i did all the recording back in like january or february um because i was originally gonna post it for year of the rabbit so but i was just like if i'm gonna post this i need to post it for easter because mm -hmm. um i already missed my shot for lunar new year <laughs> so um, but basically it was two different days of recording where, um, I was in like that, like kind of dress shirt, the like bright red one. I can't remember. I'm, I must've, I might've even actually recorded that one like around Christmas time or something. Cause I think oh, I was, wow. I think I was dressed up for Christmas. Um, and all I did was just like add some bright red lipstick or something like that. And, um, but like. I had, I don't really have a good place to record things. So that's actually in my bathroom. Um, I'm sitting on the really? floor. Oh, yeah. Wow. Cause okay. I was trying to find like blank wall and I didn't have blank wall anywhere or like where I did, there was like, you could see part of a door or, um, like my, my little ring light thing that I could set my phone on. Um, it was like down on the floor and so it was like angled up at me You're like that's not flattering oh no so <laughs> yeah, yeah so I I went to a few different places in in my house to try and figure out where to set it up and so what I ended up doing is I set it up on um the edge of the bathtub um because there's kind of like a little seat area um kind of around it so I set it up there and then like the toilet is like right here and I'm sitting on the floor trying to make sure that it's angled enough that it doesn't see the toilet or the sink, <laughs> but I've got the wall behind me and like trying to scrunch down enough that like it's, <laughs> it's still getting me at a decent angle. 
Um, I never would have known. I thought it was like in a living room or something. No, it's like, in, the, it's in the bathroom. That's the magic of editing, baby. <laughs> How awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, cause like, I didn't have any idea of what kind of music I wanted, but I was just like, oh, if it's like, kind of like, like if I did kind of like a, like a twitch kind of like into something and it was originally just going to like twitch over into like the bunny. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, cool if like it kind of like went in and out as if it was in like I was being sucked through a different dimension or something. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> and so I had the bright lighting or like the soft white lighting or whatever for the cute one. And I did probably like 15 different tries trying to like figure out what I wanted to do for it. Um, so I actually still have a huge chunk of my phone memory <laughs> that has a whole bunch of just demon those. rabbits yeah. well, well it's just like that that was the cute one and i did i did a whole bunch of tries of that because like i was just like i don't know like if i'm trying to like squish these things together um i need to make sure that i have enough options to make it work because i don't see myself getting back in this outfit again to <laughs> retry the first part again uh, yeah um and then i think it and i left my um my camera set up and everything, I just like unplugged it because the that was the other thing. So the um the plug to like plug in my ring light um was up on the wall over here. So I had the wire that came down like to the ring light that went like across my body and then like up. To just me. like Rube Goldberging this whole photo <laughs> yeah. together. And but still trying to like keep things out of the way and stuff. And so but I had to unplug it so I could just like leave it there. And then I was I ended up doing the next thing, like, either later, like, after I got back from whatever Christmas party or whatever, changed my shirt. Because I was – I originally wanted to do more of, like, a straight jacket. I wanted a straight jacket. Oh, okay. But when I was looking at stuff online, I didn't want to spend, like, $300 for a straight jacket. Otherwise, the super fake ones, like, either had writing on them or, oh, okay. like, they – buttoned up or whatever in the front you can wear my cc cosplay because it looks kind of like a straight jacket (laughs) (laughs) but but like straight jackets don't close in the front and a Mm -hmm. lot of like the costume ones closed in the front and i'm like this is stupid you want it to be authentic Um, yeah it was like very stupid i'm not doing that so i just i had a red um sweater that had kind of like a collar like a roll neck to it and so i changed into that and then um, I was just like, okay, if I'm like, I have, cause I bought that mask um, around Halloween. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I figured I could find something kind of cool and creepy to do with it. Cause it's just a big bunny mask and it's like covered in burlap um, with like the little stitches and stuff to make it extra creepy. As I was kind of like testing out lighting and stuff, cause what I did, my ring light ha- like does multiple colors. So um, I closed the door to the bathroom. So it would kind of give better, like, more dark focused little, yeah yeah contained area and i turned my ring light to a red then i was just like okay i'm like this mask is supposed to be kind of creepy so um i took a bunch of like my like grease paint and like i tried to do kind of like blood um or like a fake blood look on my fingers oh i did also have real blood too. well not real blood <laughs> not real blood what? Um, <laughs> the real the real fake blood like <laughs> The jug of like fish. You know it's Christmas. Sure. You sure. know I had real blood on me. Mm, geez. No. Um <laughs> Krampus. Where where it's not like makeup, but it's like the fake blood okay. liquidy stuff. Yeah, we believe you. And I was like dipping my fingers into this jug and then trying to like smear them on and make it like obvious that there was like that on my hands, but like does it stain? Wait. And Is then she goes to her core. She's like, wait, I'm wet. Ugh. I know. Well, that's, that's where I'm like using knuckles to oh try and like, tap things. Um, but like it wasn't showing up She's very well. She's trying to bump it with her nose. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't showing up very well with the red light. So I actually used like a really dark brown, a bit of black, and some red um, for like the grease paint for oh, okay. like on my fingers and hands and kind of on my yeah. mouth um adapt to make it a bit more visible but then like you would still kind of get like some of the drips of the like little fake blood that i was tapping my fingers into Mm -mm. um and so when it's dark it when the the room is red then it looks really great and bloody and you turn off the light and it's obvious that you were just in the bathroom (laughs) (laughs) oh bloody in the bathroom oh geez um but uh but yeah so 
I originally, like, where I didn't have the mask on, it was literally me just testing kind of like the the kind of twitch that I was trying to do and with the lighting and the angle and everything. Um, so I only had like one video of that because I was trying to make sure distance was still right and everything um, before I put my mask on. And then I was trying to do the transition to that. And but recently when I decided to like put them all together, I was like, I should use some of this like in between part because um, then it kind of changes it a bit. Um, and it worked out pretty well. Yeah. It looks so You didn't cool. know how much effort goes into a one little 20 second reel. Well, okay. And I also don't play around with like reels very much. So it was a lot of like learning to try mm-hmm. and like put in this chunk and then try and edit it however I want, cut up the edges and then, okay, well I want this other one, but I kind of want them to overlap. I can't figure out how to overlap. Okay. I have to cut these oh, different parts, okay. move the little chunks in between. Mm-hmm. And, like, kind of piece them out that way. And hopefully, like, the timing and everything works out with whatever song I find. So then I was you trying to look You didn't know the song at all when you did all those videos? No. no I chose this song, That's like, the so day that I posted crazy. it. Yeah, because, like, for TikTok, like, you – well, at least with my planning and the experience that I have with a different podcast is that I picked the song first and then I made the things – to kind of go to that song, it would probably be really hard to try to make something work for song. I mean, well, because I mean, so I recorded it just through like my regular phone or my regular phone camera. Mm. And um, so when it came to kind of putting it together, like I still didn't know what I wanted to do, because at least sometimes I have kind of an idea of like a feel. OK. And um, I didn't have that either. I was just trying to look up. <laughs> really um, I was looking up anything that had like bunny in the name or down the rabbit hole or like anything like that. And then I found that like Mad Hatter song and I'm mm. like, yeah, that works. And then yeah. like especially with like kind of one because it's like na 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 like just. And then it goes into like a bit more heavy and I was like, OK, that's probably about a good time yeah. for me to get it. And because you can slide the music around and stuff on it to try and like I. I was, like, sliding it by, like, a half a second increments to try and, like, make sure things were kind of lined up. Mm. Um, and then, okay, no, that didn't work as well. Let's go back to 16 seconds or whatever. Mm. And, like, so kind of keep moving around. Do you think but. you're going to do more um, editing like that in the future for your makeup stuff? Because I, I haven't know. done I haven't done anything yet like that for cosplay. I'm trying to get better at actually taking video when I'm doing makeup stuff because I don't do that very much and so like I tried to do that for pestilence that worked out well except I had a huge struggle with the music I knew what song I wanted and how long and everything and it wouldn't let me have more than 15 seconds of sound Mm. because then the rest of my video like the sound would drop off somehow and so or maybe it was 10 seconds it was it was silly but basically, I ended out like speeding up my entire video by like three or five times just to like be able to have the sound on it. And I don't know, maybe my phone was just freaking out because everything that I looked up said that I should have been able to have a lot more of it. And then oh, yeah. later that day, like after I posted it, someone like I saw something where someone had used the same song and they had like a minute and a half's worth of it. And I'm like, why was I not allowed to have more than like 10 seconds? I That's don't crazy. understand. So I was, I was very frustrated with that. So oh. I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> Watch out, Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually working on, I'm going to be working on some backdrops for TikTok, specifically for the different um, iterations of power, different cosplays for her. And then also for my dress up darling, Marin. Um, you guys don't know, my dress up darling motivated me to have my own name for a cosplay account on Instagram um, before I didn't have an Instagram for cosplay or a name, model name or anything like that. She didn't um, have a name. Yeah, I don't have a name. <laughs> Whatever, not important. Um, so I bought the manga for both, for My Dress Up Darling and for Chainsaw Man. And I'm reading them right now. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't really want to cut them up to make the backdrop, but I'm thinking I might try to make copies of them and hopefully it doesn't warp, you know, because I'm like folding the pages. Um, and then I'm going to, Put them on a little board on so my dress up darling on one side and then chainsaw man on the other and then i'm going to set up my ring light um and my probably my phone not the camera and just try to do some tiktoks for both of those and that's going to be 
me easing myself into the TikTok world and trying to learn how to edit those little videos um, with characters that I think are really fun. Marin, she's a cosplayer in the manga. So there's a million different cosplays that she does that I can do. <laughs> and a lot of them you could just buy out online, Perfect. which is great. <laughs> um, her original one I got on Amazon and I fixed the wig a little bit from the first time that we I think we went to Emerald City Comic Con like last year was it and the wig was not styled at all where um when I had I bought one of her Halloween in like cosplays and I did a couple pictures for that and I restyled the wig so much better oh, good. so I'm excited to do more stuff with that um but that's just going to be like a really thin sheet of board from Home Depot plaster and then just I can just flip it over and do the TikToks for the other one and I'm hoping that it's like enough to cover. I'm not going to do like full body TikToks, probably just like thighs up or even like torso up, um, just a little bit closer. Um, so yeah, I'll, that's kind of my motivation for doing a little more content, um, but instead of photo shoots to do like more videos. But I'm more motivated in the set making and the that type of stuff. Actually, now that I think about it. I think that's my favorite part about the cosplay photo shoots that we've done like at my house when we, before we moved um, is like the set decorating and the set, uh, the atmosphere on making things like with this podcast, like I like the colors and the branding and that kind of stuff. Um, for our KDA shoot that we did, the slumber party, like I had so much fun decorating our room and the living room to like make it look like a KDA house. Um, so it's kind of funny that... I have absolutely no motivation to do actual props. Like I have a Botan ore that my husband actually made for me because I won't do it myself. <laughs> and it's, I was supposed to paint it, but I ran out of time and I never finished it. So I wasn't, but I'm kind of glad I didn't like have that to have to carry around at the convention, but I definitely want it done for the photos because it looks so great. But that's just, I don't know, like everyone's so different. Like I just don't really care about props, whereas I care about the atmosphere for photos. And also that's actually my, probably my favorite part actually. More so, I like the, the atmosphere and the setting more than the actual cosplay, more than the actual prop. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I like for TikToks, I'm like, I kind of know what I'm going to do, but the setting is, <laughs> the background is like my first priority. So silly. Well, that's great <laughs> that you have that kind of uh, focus, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I kind of just show up at places and hope that something's going to work out backdrop wise. <laughs> and so it's kind of nice to have where you're on like the extreme opposite end of that. And you're like, nope, I know exactly where each photo is going to be taken. And it's going to like, like the KDA house or how you set up the house for the horror, horror legends. <laughs> <laughs> like set design. Danime. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted for my photo shoot for Botan, I want to do pictures in front of cherry blossoms, but the last two weekends have been super rainy. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to have a chance because I have a very short window of time on a Saturday or Sunday. I'm kind of SOL at this point, but there's nothing I can do. Like I just, I, there's no other time I can go. And the rain, it's just been so like stormy on the weekends when I actually have time to shoot that I, there's just not going to be an option. So that sucks because that's what I really want. I think it'd be well, so Well, that's cute. why the Lord invented Photoshop. Yeah. I'm going to just edit. <laughs> cherry blossoms behind me yeah. <laughs> well i mean i do cosplay a lot of anime characters so last year when i did Marin's halloween one i did just use like an anime backdrop because she's in a manga like there's there's lots of weird backdrops like little like hearts or polka dots or you know that's kind of common so maybe that's what i'm gonna have to do for botan <laughs> you guys have anything going on the next couple weeks um, that backdrop is something I'm going to be working on, um, but I want to read the manga first, and then I'll decide if I'm going to destroy them or make copies. And then get. I'm just going to finish up Bombshell Wonder Woman, which you can catch at least every Tuesday on Twitch. At and least. <laughs> <laughs> I've kind of moved the time a little bit because it was stressing me out to do five o'clock when I end work at 4 30 oh so God. I've pushed it back to 5 30 um and yeah and so I just keep going until I'm done basically so hang out cutting edge cosplay on twitch um 
You can catch us on our Discord where we kind of put anything that we talk about on Twitch. I've been throwing into the Discord so people can find the references, see what we're working on. Just come and chat. We've got, you know what Discord is. Mm -hmm. We've got our Instagram, Cutting Edge Cosplay. We have a link tree. We have merch now. So if you want to come support our podcast, you can find our merch. We'll put a link in the description. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, today, this weekend. This morning, wherever you're watching it, um, we will see you next time. Bye. Adios, amigos. Arrivederci. <laughs>